Welcome back to Railroads Online. I am River, and I am looking at my first real locomotive. <laughs> Although the other ones are real locomotives, but this is more powerful and official looking, I guess. Not some little toy that boys play with. This is a man's cook mogul. Let's go take a look at what that means for those of you who don't have the game. It is, so we have the porters at tier one, and this is the black porter is tier two. So from what I've heard, these this Climax and this Heisler are either very bad or very low geared so they don't go very fast, but they can go up hills. Um, there's some other things that I've heard about them that could or may or may not be good. Like this one is, is very rigid in its built, so it's it needs very straight tracks apparently. So I think this one might be a little bit better because these pivot better, but they're very more or less low speed and I don't want that to start out. So it was recommended to me by one of the viewers, Elemental, that I definitely go with the Cook Mogul first. Um, I'm saying Cook because I knew Leroy Cook and he had an E on his name. I also knew Meg Green. She had an E on her name and, you know, there you go. We didn't say the E. We didn't call her Greenie. At least not unless we were picking on her, I guess. And then otherwise we will get some more trains, but I think the Cook Mogul will be a nice step. I've heard people complaining about the Eureka, like has no power. So we'll see what happens. Where's the torque? Attractive effort. Yeah, 56. That's like the same as a Heisler. Oh. Yeah, Cook is like 9,000. I guess it's kind of geared in between a little bit. Even if you look at these numbers, 11,000 is very high gear. This is not, but this also looks like, I mean, it's the tier three. So I'm imagining it's the step in between the Porter. Then you have the 6,000 Porter. So that, yeah, that other one, what was it? Eureka has less traction than a Porter does, but look at the size and weight of it. So you figure it would be potentially slower. But then again, I guess the Eureka is only a tier three as well. Tiers mean nothing to us. We are tier 99. I have no idea even what my tier is. But we don't want to accidentally buy something. What is my tier? Eight. Okay, good for me. That sounds pretty high in a, in a way. How's our money left? So we still have almost $2,000, which is great because it's been a while. We haven't bought this because of not having money as much as anything else. I would have bought something sooner, but I really wanted to get my track laying done kind of ASAP and... And then I wanted to buy rail cars as a priority, but we're in pretty good shape, especially on the rail cars in the beginning. But one of the reasons I'm here is actually to get a few more rail cars. I kind of have a whole little plan that I've been thinking of in between episodes. Let's, I think I got four pieces. Let's see. Oh, that was three pieces. How are we doing with the, let's go zoom backwards one time. Good. We've got heat, which is what we needed to get this thing hooked up and pulled out of the way a little bit. Because I want to buy two... Yeah, reversing. I want to buy two bulkhead cars. Not actually even going to use this on this train. So I'm not even sure that what I'm doing makes that much sense. But let's see. Get this thing. Oop. There we go. I heard the noise. There we go. So we should be good to go, or at least pull out. All right, we're not leaving. Let's just get out of the way so we don't have to switch tracks. And I was looking at the view out of the window here, and we have pretty much the same problem. They really need to make this guy four foot tall, as opposed to a Norwegian six foot six. You know, this could be scale for the time, but look how look his head is like above the window. You know, like his nose is above the window level, so you can't really see out. And I'm not sure why they, are they deliberately making that difficult, or is it an oversight? But pretty cool, look at that, we have a new shiny locomotive. And what I plan to do, as mentioned in this, the la at the end of the last episode, is this will be about getting cordwood to the smelter. I thought more about the firewood and... We're already two parts into this. I'm not in a hurry. This, this, but I did. My thoughts were, well, let's make a quick little series about how to get to 200 barrels. <laughs> Episode. Oh, geez, you know what I did? I know what I did. I remember. Compressor. 
Yeah, you have to turn on this air compressor, which doesn't, I don't know, may have made sense at the time, but I guess what I can do in the meantime is turn this on, right? Typically, a train engine will have mechanical brakes and won't rely on its compressor to stop the brakes, but Lord knows, I have no idea how a train from way back in these days would have acted. All right, so we can leave that on. We'll let that thing build up pressure. I do want to get a... Yeah, I don't like that that's not highlighting there on this thing. There we go. We've got a link in here, so let's go ahead and buy what I was talking about. Which is two of these, so we can carry eight cordwood. Not sure that that's... Oh, not these. No, it's in flat. Not tier one. Tier... There we go. Tier three. Now, we might even end up with more of these in the future once I once you see my whole plan. All right, there we go. All right, so let's take this brake off. Get back in there. Yeah, we have brake pressure now. One thing I did notice is we could probably turn that down once we get our pressure up enough to stop us. We'll take the brake off, reverser. Now the generator, I have no idea, I guess in the future if you have electricity, but typically, at least nowadays, it's my understanding that the engines have their own braking system, just like you would in a car. It might be more mechanical or not, but it, it's just, it's a braking system that puts the wheels on the locomotive. And I think that's partially saved. Now some of them even have like an electrical dynamo that will generate heat and or electric store electricity when it's you know, like it reverses the motors to turn them into generators. But the air brakes are typically airlines connect to each of the of the cars and then that applies the brakes on every car so that I'm sure a lot of you guys are railroad fans and know what I'm talking about better than I know what I'm talking about. But okay, here we are. Right here. All right, so we can take this brake off, and I fear this would be a good little test. Yeah, we'll leave that just the way it is. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna, while I'm thinking about it, let me put a link on that one because we're gonna go right down to the rail yard and connect this thing up. Nope, still reverser. So the only reason I'm doing this is just to get to, I like to purchase things with you guys. You see the see that I'm purchasing. I know this isn't exactly a let's play anymore, but for those of you who followed from the very beginning, you've spent a lot of hours and I don't want to just be off buying too much stuff. I mean, I have bought some rail cars here or there for the sake of time, not included you. But I thought it would cool be cool to see the first ever. Not first ever, but first big engine on its first maiden voyage. So this one's as much for the people who've been with it as opposed to jumping in at this point. All right, so forward. We've got brake pressure. We've got no more fire. This thing's... Hope it doesn't eat too much fire. I'm just going to park it there anyway for a little while. So that's. So what I'd like to do is take Porter number two and make him our, or her, however you want to look at that, our. cordwood engine right because it's a little bit of a it's almost like the logging train where it's a, just a trip back and forth and I think it will work out because I will just leave that train up in the logging camp I'll leave the other logging the old Betsy the log train and I'll run Betsy up to the logging camp park her switch the switches run my cordwood which really isn't that much other than the smelter we definitely need more logs than that. And then I can just bring back another load of logs. And I just don't, I think that that will work out for the most part. If I have to run back and forth, they're not really that far from each other. I hope that if that starts happening, then I'll consider leaving 
old Betsy somewhere else. So let's not get going too fast here. Too excited. We connected before we get too far out of town. All right, let me be quiet for a minute and ramp this thing up a bit. straight. I can't say that blew my socks off. It certainly, you know, went forward and <laughs> did its thing. You know, like it wasn't. You know, we'll see how it works out on the hills and the and the dale, right? The hill and dale. I don't know if anybody. I think a, a dale is like a little valley, like. I mean, that could almost be, I mean, it's man-made, but that would be like a dale. It would just be like a little slope down. The valley being, like, similar, but much, much bigger. Now, I flipped all the switches down here, so we shouldn't have to do too much of that, other than almost like we had an assistant ready for us up to this point. All right, you're braking this time. Yeah, I should have checked that a little more. Yeah, see how our brake, air brake pressure dips down? That's the same in real life. If you use too much, you know, you can run out of it. Now, I don't know that our cars here have brakes. Like, there would be hoses that would attach each car, like a continuous pipe. Now, I have no idea in general how well this train is going to do on all of our tracks. Just because they're not the best of tracks everywhere and i'm assuming that this one from what i'm told is friendlier you know towards you know tracks not being real wide and swooping like tighter turns not as friendly as the porters of course but. so that's one of the reasons i think this was a good choice for a second train two fast backwards here like I said, it's nice when you just when you have someone to like me to <laughs> change all your switches and just come right in. I need a servant. That's what you need on here, you know, like a man servant that will go around and switch your switches. You didn't might not have had remote control, but labor was cheap back in these days. So far, so good. I think I'm being a little overconfident. There's a hill here, so I'll back off a tad. Yeah, so this will be... Well, I don't know. This, this is sort of marking the final run of Betsy, in a sense, as the primary breadwinner of the family. We are now We are now into the big age of the big engines. Betsy could be relegated to a side job. I guess that probably happened to a lot of trains, you would think. You know, like they it really wasn't that many years that you would go from little Betsy to something bigger and bigger. I mean the improvements in the rail industry were were pretty massive. That was a nice stop for one of my first times, wasn't it? All right, so now what we need to do is get yeah, this one. Now we... Didn't we just pick up two? Why do these... Oh, because this one might have had a thing in it. 
Oh, this one already had a link. All right, I gotta pull forward. That's annoying. Yeah, I usually always take them out of the engine. I don't know why I didn't here. Um, yeah, come on, buddy. All right, what are you doing? His, tr his wheels are slipping. He can't go forward because. Yeah, that's that's definitely a physics glitch in the game right there that happens. All right, so you. There you go. All right, okay. It definitely seems that when you back into things, it's worse. You know, like whatever's happening when we like reverse what we're doing, that's when it seems to, to happen. There we go. So for now, I'll just leave those brakes on and we'll disconnect this guy. What do we do with him? I guess we'll just put him over on the loop one of the loop out. Oh, we don't want to go reverse. Go forward. See, now that time it didn't do it. Now we did move backwards first and then forward, but you know, it's, it's not overly impressive how fast we're moving forward, but whatever. So I will put him like over here. And we don't need to loop around. We'll just we'll black. Well, actually, Betsy's never coming back, right? So that's another advantage. We get this train we get this train out of here and it gives us a little more room to to go do other things like and I, and I like I said I really do think that that's going to work out it might not but cuz I don't really I haven't really run through all of the logistics like we're doing now Yeah, it's just wiggling. And it's on a hill. This is actually a downhill as well. And I'm almost positive I took that brake off, right? Oop, let's go. That's completely disoriented. I kind of wish this thing didn't end. Huh? There's, there's definitely no brake on that. So I don't know. Just a little odd. Come on, you can do it. Now, are they saying that this, I wonder, I bet you this, this uh, tender car can break off the same way, huh? So I'm thinking maybe we should put the brake on that if it's ever sitting here like it is now. And I can also see with the length of these things that that roundabout is really kind of limited, isn't it? I didn't flip this switch. Gosh darn it. That's not gonna work too well, is it? <laughs> running out of running out of juice here as well. Yeah, definitely popping out of there is more disorienting for the with the tinted windows. Did they have tinted windows like that back in the day? I mean, I know they didn't have plastic film tinted windows, but I guess they could have tinted glass. I know they had stained glass. I imagine the technology wouldn't have been that hard to figure out. I know they weren't doing it for UV protection like they do nowadays. There we go. Now we're, as long as we don't swing around and hit it, because it is kind of close there. Look how little that looks compared to this. <laughs> yeah, see how the front end? No, it's not going to swing that much. 
All right, we'll put that in forward just because that's the way we're going to go. And then leave it there. We'll get back in little Betsy. Do we need to do anything different? Uh, just, well, yeah, we need to flip this back. Let her out. Not Betsy, number two. And then we'll just have to go back in here, just the reverse of what we just did. That was our fire. Of course, it's not. Gonna throw five pieces in. Yeah, at least we have some pressure to get going. That is a, even though it's pretty unrealistic, you know, most systems are gonna have little leaks. It, it is a nice feature of the game. A little bit. Now what I think we'll do, even though we've eaten up a fair amount of time, is I think I'd like to, and I wanted to show you guys the yard work. I think it's more interesting in some ways than, than other stuff. Uh, let's slow down and stop before we go too far. All right, and that one's, yeah, we just came out of there, so that one's set. So I'm going to drive this up there myself, I think, and then we'll take the round trip together, because that's part of my intention with this series, is to show you guys each of the... That'll also let me just sit here and let this heat build up a tiny bit, because that's going to be a problem <laughs> getting out of here. Then, then just for the sake of time, we'll... We'll do that. Now, the next thing, and the, the way this kind of all works out, the next trip we'll take is I want to bring some of the iron ore down to the iron works. And then after that, we could bring some rails and beams to the coal mine. And that'll be a little bit of a longer trip. So this, this episode, this part, will take you know, just this, these two little trips and kind of get them out of the way as far as showing all the logistics. And then we'll have the longer trip to the coal mine to supply the coal mine so we can get some coal. And it should work out as long as my spreadsheet is right, which it usually often is. All right, so let me just cut it here. I'll hook this guy up. I'll get him pulled out. We'll get over to the logging camp. And then we'll take a trip together down to the smelter. Yeah, let me just stop right there. All right, see you guys in a few minutes. There we go. We got a fully loaded cordwood train. Eight cars. So there should be eight in each one. It means we're going to be delivering 64 cordwood. And let's take this round trip together. We'll come back up here. This is where we'll park it permanently. And then it shouldn't be in the way of the logging train because that one's going to go this way. So imagine we come up here, we park the logging train. And then we hop out, get in this one, do our cordwood thing. At that point, we could bring a load of logs back to the sawmill. Because the logs are, sawmills, I don't want to say always going to use logs, but it's certainly going to be a popular thing. It's ever, Like I said, everything starts with logs. So let's make sure everybody's coming with us. Now, on the way up here, this took me way too long to get up here. Because I kept losing rail cars for some reason. And I don't... I've never really lost rail cars. I don't think I did anything in particular. Now this car, you know, these cars have been sitting there in the new rail yard. And I don't know if that had anything to do with it. And I did leave them. I left the brakes not on them because I had left this attached at the end of the last episode. So I'm not real sure why I lost so many links. It was like three different times. Like when I was first pulling out, I lost the last two cars and then... When I was going up the hill once, I lost the last four cars, and then, you know, and then I once again I started pulling away, and I lost the other cars. And I had even like double checked that everything looked like it was connected. I don't know. We'll see. Just hopefully we don't lose too many cars. But I think, and I also got this other switch flip, flipper switch, so we should be in pretty good shape. This is probably the mo not the most glamorous run. But a necessary one nonetheless. We have to watch out. This hill is is a killer. I think we ran it a little bit with the logging one a couple episodes ago, a couple parts ago. Let's 
So yeah, I don't think I'm going to show the cord wood delivery unless it happens to be that I come up with some strategy of delivering cord wood while I'm while I'm delivering other stuff. I just don't think it's that dramatic. We'll point out where I have the firewood things if it's at all interesting. See how these cars bounce around coming. I mean, my track laying skills were not the greatest. It would, I think I was too abrupt at times with changes. I think it's whenever you can have sweeping changes, that's better. need to put fuel in. They really need to let us put fuel in. On the run. <laughs> Get that brake off. Right, I mean, I don't know why. They obviously don't agree. There's some... It wouldn't be that hard, I don't think, to plop wood in there. Maybe that's not how their mechanics work, but... I don't understand. I guess they just don't want you to be able to do that. It like, seems a fairly arbitrary limit on what you can do here, but... They, you know, why would you build this screen if you didn't want people to use it? I don't know. I still have all the cars, right? Definitely has me nervous. And this is the hill. Well, this little stretch is where I lost them twice. That's a little bit extreme on the slowness there. None of the brakes were on. There was no real... I don't know. I, I checked everything twice. Like I said, I know this is a pretty sharp turn. I think I may have lost it right here once, but the other time I lost it, it was somewhere further over this way. So I'm not sure why they would have detached. Could, it could have been right there that it detached. I, I noticed them pretty quickly, but fairly quickly. But th this track out here should be pretty reasonable. So, right, we'll see. So unless we want to go right back into the rail yard, I guess we should slow down and switch this switch up here. I think I already switched the other one. Yeah, I switched the furthest one. It's just this one needs to be flipped. And I have no idea. Well, I probably need to flip switches down. Where did we come from? I don't even remember right this minute. I think we came from the... No, we left... We, we came from the smelter, so we should be able to pull right in, I think, actually. Depends on which way we... We do have to go in the certain way. We can't go in either way. We have to go in... So that we can back these things into where the cordwood is. We'll see. I'll, I'll talk to you when I get down there. Well, actually, I can talk along the way because that bridge, but let me be loud right now.
There we go. It's quiet. Going a little too slow there, aren't I? I just had a thought, too. There's no real reason we need to leave this all the way up by the logging camp. I mean, we could leave this in the main intersection there, and then just whenever we wanted to run out some cordwood, we could always pick it up. Usually about 30-some is, is pretty good for me coming down this hill with this. Still have all the cars. At this point, at least they're going to end up at the smelter one way or the other. It really has me nervous. I don't understand why I'm losing so many links. Maybe is it these cars in particular cause it? Because I haven't had any problems for quite a while. No, we use these for the oil. We didn't have any issues. I don't know. I forget which way we pulled in here. So we need to be able to come in this way and back up and then go back over to there, right? So. Yeah, we're switched. little juice to get up over this hill but then we're back downhill so we got to be a bit careful and the big question is this one yeah, this one's accepting us and that one's turning us in the right way so let's slow down all right this one's leaning so we can come in and this one is perfect i just forgot which way we came out of there last time So when we come out again, we have to flip this, and then if we were going to do two cordwood runs, you know, you need to remember to flip it back the other way. Yeah, I really don't like this. People were complaining about the LOD, the loading distance, and it is kind of disconcerting at times when you see these tracks look horrible, and then as you get closer, it gets a lot smoother looking. I definitely hope they give us the option to change that, just because it's making my tracks look bad from anything over 40 feet away, 30 feet away. Now, those of you who watched the whole series have seen this. I think I'm just going to do the first set on the recording just to keep things, you know, reasonably short. And then I'll unload the rest. I'll stop it. I don't know if the trees are going to be in my view. We're moving along pretty good. Let's... I think I see the switch. It's just about to pass that last car. I can't really tell. But I'm pretty sure we're past that switch. I don't know. Oops. Let me get rid of some trees. Now that we have money. Yep, there's my switch can't really see it that well from there and one thing to do is stand on the stand on the tracks the other thing let's go out here because some of these trees block my view yeah, I think it's the ones like right here when I'm swinging around this turn I don't like these especially the probably is that one more than any other expect a fair amount more tree cutting down though I want to make that part of like a track improvements kind of 
thing. I'm sort of separating out the categories as opposed to doing like a let's play where I just show you all the nitty gritty. So we'll, we'll see where we're having issues with the track and get some in-depth improvements. I also want to try to work on using the radius tool more often. I haven't really used that, but I could definitely see where, at least in some circumstances, it could be superior because you can make it, like if you, this is a real tight turn, if you wanted to make a turn this tight, my thought is that you'd be better off doing it You'd be better off doing it with the uh, tool, right? Because then you could get, like, the perfect tight turn. Because I think the problem with some of the tight turns, if you're doing it by hand, is that you, you know, you want a 25-degree turn or whatever it is, but you end up with, like, not perfectly 25, so you end up with tighter portions. And it's good. Oh, what happened there? Did we lose? Yeah, look at that. We lost three train cars huh yeah I don't know this I'm, I'm possessed today All right, well let's keep backing up because we do want these uh, you know what let me check let me check for a link yeah this one's still got a link we can undo this just for the sake of it. I don't think that matters, but I can unload these. Well, why don't I unload them? I mean, me re reconnecting again. I don't want this to take too long. Can you get them all? Not this one. There we go. There we go. Yep, 28. That makes sense. So now we have to. I have to reconnect to these. What I'll do is I'll pull forward and then I'll put them over here on like this track until we're ready to, ready to go. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I mean, this is a tight turn, and that's maybe that's where the link is breaking. I don't know. We can talk about improving that in the future. But let me get this done, and I will be back in a few minutes. All right. Well, it happened again. <laughs> And this time it actually broke on this one, right? So it's it this one busted, and so I went to get out of the train. It was you know I had put the brake on, but I went to get out of the train. The next thing you know, this one just like jumped in the air. Like as I was getting out, I didn't even really see it derail, but it was like in the air as I was getting out. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, and it definitely like I'm looking at this like that's awful sharp in a way and ugly looking. But it wasn't, I don't know, I did this before. Maybe not with eight cars, but I did the same thing on this turn and didn't have this nearly this many problems. So I don't know what to say. Let's go ahead and uh, re-rail this guy. And I don't want to put him down there. I'm not sure if we're going to have a good, yeah, we do have them. Get you right there. How about a little bit? All right, do you have a link? Yeah, let's put your brake on. So what I'm thinking of is, I'm thinking maybe we should redo this. I don't know. I don't think I left that looking like that. So I'm thinking, and I have heard them talking about changing these splines. So I'm wondering if that's not causing me problems. So what I would actually like to do is stop the recording here. Oops, yeah, reverse and redo a little bit of this i mean I, I think i could redo this connection hopefully make it look a little bit better than it does right now and then redo this term but what i would like to do is do that in another series so in other words i want to make a series of let's repair things or improve things in this case repair and just see if that isn't our problem because it I'm breaking links too much today, and maybe they changed the links, and maybe this turn, or maybe it's the splines. I'm willing to redo this, but I think it's going to take too long in this particular 
this particular series, right? I don't want to make all the, I don't want to make this series too long, like I said. So. Yeah, let's drive this guy. I think that we got a link in that other one too, right? Can we just drive you guys back together? Connect. Yeah, well, we heard the noise, so everything else. And, and I've checked this before plenty of time. So, all right, well, we'll see. I need to take off some brakes, and, well, we'll just leave the brakes. You know what? I do want to do that, though, because I'll see that guy's on 100%. Let's go put this last one. I think that's the first one that I. So we're going to leave that on because it might be a little while before I get back to this. I think I got another one of these. Yeah. Yeah, there's these two I put on. Yep, good. So all the brakes are off. All right, well, I will see you back after I fix this, and then you will see me fix this at some point in the near future. Well, we redid the intersect or the turn here. <laughs> Hopefully, it's a little better. Let me focus on what we're I got to back up here. So I've got each of these unloaded. If you want to see more of the details of how I fix the turn, you'll have to stay tuned for the first episode. It'll be the first segment, I think, of the repairing the rail series or something like that. All right. Hopefully, that's still close enough. Hit that a little bit hard. Uh, no, <laughs> probably not. Let's just back up a tiny, real nice and easy. There we go. So we didn't lose any more. So we had unloaded the first three cars. I kind of did a little bit of testing. And we seem pretty good now. Since you guys haven't seen this yet, let's just take a real quick look. So what I did was I actually made this the straight section and then this the turn section, which pushed this out further, which caused me to go up the hill there. This is a 30 degree turn that I made with the tool, the alt tool, whatever you want to call that. We kind of go up that turn, that hill a little bit. As far as like the circle goes, it makes the most sense. Like if you were looking down on it to do what we did, but then then we go up the hill. So... Let's see if we have any issues over time. I'm not too worried about issues with... Oh, you know what? No, no, no. no. We're not ready yet. I need to take the brake off of this last car. All right, it's not on this one. Let's we'll go check them all having that kind of a day I'm having the kind of day that you need to just check them all to make sure that's not part of why you're having issues checking stupid stuff that but I am starting to think that the changes to the splines again good bad or indifferent right not I'm not complaining about it just I think that that could be it that that's making the most sense to me because we were we were back and forth over this a lot of times, or enough times, that I'd never had any issues, and it sort of seems odd I would have just started having issues after I read about spline changing. And considering I hand laid all these down and they weren't weren't necessarily the smoothest ever in all cases. See how that even looks it just looks smoother as that LOD pops in. You don't get all that you know, now the problem is is this uphill section. And it's, I probably could have made it a little smoother. I just followed the hill. I didn't put any real road bed. So we'll see. You know, is everybody coming with us? Yes. Eight cars. All right, if you look, like it's kind of up and down. I don't know that that's going to cause problems, but I, it's in the perfect world, I would have my backhoe out there digging away that hill, but we can't, can't lower the ground, right? 
for you for anybody in Britain, it's a digger. Now, I don't I didn't flip this switch. I'm going to have to stop and flip the switch, but we might as well get get some more water while we're there, I guess. You know, we really don't need it per se. We just won't have to get it when we you know, so the next trips that this thing takes depends on what we do, of course, but this could run out to get firewood, but other than that, we're going to not retire, but relegate number 2 here to a lesser duty. Stop, does it? I left the I left the lid open. Yeah, I found getting at it and looking this way does see that might I might want to raise it up a little bit. Let's see if it let's move it over this way and just up a tiny bit. Yeah, it's already at five hundred anyhow, so it's probably at a good enough spot. We need firewood. Now nah, I'll do that off camera. We should have plenty of. Well, we'll give it one more. One more for the trip, since it's a little bit of a long trip. And then I do love to do that. This is my favorite derailing technique: is not flipping the flipper. Right, we kind of want to. Good, at least we're making it out there. It's pretty steep right here, so... Good idea. See if we break any links on it, right? <laughs> I don't know, need to go crazy. I've already re reattached enough links on this one train. Switch to another train. At least this will be something new to reattach links on. There we go. Pretty good shape. Now the next trip in won't matter so much. But let me let me make some noise and I'll talk to you when it gets a little quieter, which will be a while, little while.
Okay, it's a little quieter. We should be able to buzz right through here, though I don't want to do it at such a speed. Because it's not the fastest built track. It's one of the reasons, if you look right here, where this tr the end of this track where I cleared those trees, there's actually a pretty level section that goes on the other side of this hill. And when you think about this particular trip having to come into here, you could be just as well off turning there and then like going around and joining the main track somehow. So that you don't have to go like and that would alleviate like all of a sudden then you have less that has to happen here. Like this doesn't need to be here any longer to be able to. Well, I guess it does, right? Because you still have to go up to the logging camp for the logs. I don't know what you're saving. But you get the idea. Like, there's a little bit less that would have to happen here as far as, you know, like, trains getting in and out. So you might be able to get away with doing more. Let's see if we lose anybody here. Because we... I was just doing this, and we lost some, you know, the train links before, so... I think I've said it before. We do need to improve that whole area there, but that turn in particular. Uh, we, why I lost them the first time, I don't know. I don't think I did anything different other than I was coming from that rail yard. No, uh, they all, they all definitely made it. it back. So what I need to do is we'll pull this guy in, get him ready to be loaded, or at least in the first slot, and then I could always leave him loaded if I wanted to at a future point. No, no not going to do that right now, but I need to come, I'll flip this switch so that the next, because I know the next train that comes up will be the log train at some point in the distant future. And then we'll be able to, you know, just hop into this guy if we want, or just or run logs. We can do whatever we want. Sort of depends on the the phase of the operation. But and again, I'm not sure that we'll, in the longest term that this will work out. That we'll leave him here. But he's certainly out of the way and has a job in life that he's well suited to. I don't think it's taking advantage of the game too much any more than I have certainly to. To have this guy pull eight cars around and drop off cordwood is limiting the OP-ness of this. And so from now on, we'll try to get by with the other trains and see what they do for us as far as uh, capabilities. I think I want to pull up until this guy is towards the back. Good. And then just, even though this is downhill with all the issues I've had, I think I'm going to put this final break on because it'll be a long time before I come back. And the fact that this is downhill is probably mushing them all together. It's over here. Not going to break my heart either. All right, so let's go flip this switch. And then I, but now we need to run back. That's the only other negative. And then we'll flip the switch towards the front. 
That way the logging guy can come in and out as he pleases. And that should be enough cordwood, just so you know, for our project. We have, we look at my spreadsheet here, we already have 100 rails and 94 iron. So the fact that we have 68 should be able to get us to the point we have 150 of each of those. And I think that's going to be enough. And if it's not, we'll just have to make another run. We're, we're prepared for it, right? Now this is the other switch that switches you towards going for logs. So we'll flip that guy over. And this guy doesn't matter. Go in and out whatever way we want. And one thing I want to do while I run back is just get rid of some of these trees that are like super close or silly looking otherwise. I guess this whole mound of gravel you could argue is a little bit silly otherwise but there's just a few of these that are just if they're hanging over the branches are hanging over i like the fact that it's closed in and tight looking makes me feel like i'm going up to the mountains if you ever been on mountain roads where there's pine forests they definitely you can feel closed in right with the with the trees but this this one, for example, is just a little bit too much. Both of these guys could go. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but never could really justify the money. I actually like the look. You know, that guy's borderline. We'll get rid of him. I would think in real life you wouldn't want, especially back in those days when you had the ten chances of fire and all, think that you wouldn't want to set the forest on fire so you'd probably need a fairly good you know, distance that was probably far enough away Here you go oh beast lord attacked yeah, I can't even see what I'm clicking I think I got one there we go dancing trees See, some of these just look silly because they're in the side of that road bed. That's far enough. Every episode's about track laying. <laughs> We're fixing tracks. I'm just going to cut some of these since I have the tool out. And same thing over here. Some of these were kind of close, I think. Yeah, like this one. They just hurt your view of switches and whatnot. Right, these guys are blocking the switch, your view of the switches down to here. So at least we see a little more. I'll, I'll do more clearing out, maybe even on my own, but there we go. Well, I think just looking at the time of the video, we're pretty much at the end. So I think what I would like to do, rather than rush it and end up going way over, is maybe we'll just come back and get this guy all set up and ready to go for for the next episode. So again, one whole episode, and we just got a thing of cordwood moved. Well, that's not true. We did go up and buy the new mogul, so that, that took some time, you know. Oops. Let's put some fire in him. I know he's going to need it. Yeah, good. I don't put too much because uh, we have to flip a switch, I'm sure. This one, if nothing else. I wonder if that's going to hit a train if that thing's flipped the other way. Do, do these... Yeah, we need to flip this one too. Like if that thing looks like it's hanging out into this space, right? So then this one's going to need to flip that way so we can get back in there. That way, this way we'll be all ready to go. Perfect. 
cursor forward. We actually have, well, the water temperature's not up yet, but. Oh, you know what? Ah, we left that off. Okay. I think we should leave that on from what people were saying, because I think that can disconnect as well. Or does it disconnect with this break? No, I don't think it does. But I don't know that. But I don't think it does. Is <laughs> yeah, so the brake holds its temperature as well, doesn't it? That's or not temperature. It holds its pressure. Out, flip this one. A lot of work getting 200 barrels of oil. That's for sure. Get the reverser going. So this is 13 rail cars. No particular reason that we would take 13 iron ore down there other than we have 13, not 13, 13 times three would be like 39. There's no reason we would take 39 iron down there, I don't think, as a good or bad number. Um, you know, you probably would want more if it was capable of handling it, but I really don't know the capabilities of this thing yet. So we'll just go with what we have, and I think it'll be a good test of good test of things. Oh, I don't even know if I have a link in there, do I? Probably don't. Let's go. Look. That's all right. I'll worry about that at the beginning of the next episode. We'll we'll go check just to see if I. Oh yeah, we do. Good. So I'm I'm just going to leave these breaks on because I want to go take a break from playing, and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to jinx myself, but look, now we don't have hardly have any trains left in here. So we'll see. We're going to be buying a lot more stuff and trains. And like in the future, we might even decide that it's, you know, the cook mogul's job to just haul these kind of cars to the two different locations. And then we'll have another train that comes in that, you know, we'll park on another one of these strips, maybe that that goes and does the, the coal and the hopper cars or something along those lines. We'll see. We'll work it out. It'll be fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves and see you in the next one. All right.